Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. So, I woke up this morning venting. I figure I'd go to sleep venting. I'm not talking about my personal stuff at all. I'm talking about the Lakers because this team, I'm telling you, man, I, I don't know that I can say anything that I haven't already said. So, like I said, I'm just going to vent. I'm not particularly angry. You know, I think most of what I had to say in regards to the team has been said, but I just want to iterate this. I'm listening to guys like Tim Legler describe what the Lakers have to deal with, which is having defensive issues, um, not being present, but lots of offensive issues, unfortunately. So what ends up happening is like a football team, he described it. You have a great defense that shows up to play, but then you have a series of three and outs, three and outs, three and outs. Eventually, the defense is going to lose its fervor for continuing to grind. And that's an issue when you're unable to score the ball. I don't find the Lakers to be a team that's unable to score the ball. They just have to methodically use the three-point shot to create the space necessary for them to operate. That doesn't mean the shot has to fall at all. It just means you have to attempt enough of them to keep them from packing the paint. Tim Legler said we don't have a three-point shooter on our team. That's false. We do. His name is Matt Ryan. 37 is a weapon. He can shoot. He can shoot a lot. We just got to use him properly and get him used to being on the NBA floor. But he can hit the shot. So we need to just utilize what we can do. But it starts, honest to God, it starts with LeBron James' approach in regards to the shots that he's willing to take for himself to create that same space. I cannot stress this enough. There's never a problem with LeBron James going two for seven, two for nine on a team that shoots an average amount of three-point percentage. Not necessarily the volume, that doesn't matter, but the percentage. As long as their percentage is on average, on par with the rest of the league, he could totally get away with that. <laughs> but when your team is historically bad shooting the tray. You cannot go about your shot selection the same way and expect to have success because you're losing too many otherwise, you know, guaranteed possessions just off of the sheer ineptitude of your shooting as a team. And so that's what, that's what I believe in regards to my philosophy about what we're doing. I just don't think the Lakers have found who they are yet as a team. And I'm afraid they're gonna lose for they're gonna lose focus. Listen to the media tell them who they are and not actually look at who they actually are built to be. It's not as simple as us being a team that cannot score. We are literally trying to do things that we should not try to do from possession to possession to possession. Each possession I'm seeing, it's not, I am not looking at a team, the Los Angeles Lakers, that are incapable of scoring the basketball, that are con being confused by impossible defenses like the Boston Celtics and the Golden State Warriors were throwing at each other last year. That's not what I'm seeing. I'm seeing teams that are not overly great defensively and teams that are rather skinny after you get behind that initial center that they have teams that probably are not equipped to defend a lot of interior scoring they want you to shoot the three and if you happen to park it back there they're happy that you miss it if you make it they'll move up and you'll create the space on the inside that will make life easy for you. But you got to just force the issue while they're there. And that's what I was saying. You got to play bulldozer basketball. You got to force people to foul you. You got to force the referees to call the foul. And you got to expect them not to. That's the mentality. That's the that's the perfect algorithm, I guess, or the perfect uh, equation for for Lakers is to force the issue for calls. But do not expect them. Why? Same thing as I said in that last video. Because you're a defensive team. So the first order of business is to make sure you're getting back on defense. Because that is your bread and butter. 
Scoring is just something that you do after you've succeeded in what it is that you're meant to do, which is defend. And when we start having that mentality, we focus most of our energy on the defensive end and everything on the offensive end is built around either creating space necessary to get in the paint or forcing people to get us, uh, force people to, to put us at the line. That is how this team is built to, to compete. That's what we're going to be able to do for ourselves. Now, as long as we continue to shoot threes as if we're an average three-point shooting team or slightly below average three-point shooting team, then we're going to suffer. What we need to do is to have the three-point attempts match our three-point percentage. You see what I'm saying? That's why I think 18 makes more sense. Because you want to come down and try to get up to an average that you, the rest of the league is shooting. So your attempts have to come down, in my mind. It's like, okay, we're shooting. We're only hitting like nine of them. Right? We're only hitting nine. We're only hitting like eight, nine. One night here, we'll hit eight, nine the next night. Okay. So shoot half, So just shoot twice that and leave it at that. <laughs> like, let's call it a day. And if you happen to hit two of, of 18, it ain't going to kill you that bad. Because it's not as ne nearly as many possessions lost as shooting 50-something and only walking away with eight of them. And people, are, you know, maybe players look at that and say, well, Brandon, I mean, we can't get to the paint. They're clogging the paint. I'm like, you got a better shot at playing uh, a bowling ball basketball and trying to force the issue that way, then you're doing, doing what you're doing right now. You know what I mean? I don't want to hear about them packing the paint. I want to see you packing the paint with them, setting back screens, front screens, and forcing the issue physically. You wear them down, you wear yourself down, but it's the only way you compete, man. You gotta ugly the game. There was a team back in the 2000s that Kobe uh, faced only twice, obviously, Chicago Bulls. But that's how they played us one random year and i'll never forget it they couldn't really shoot the ball but they really could defend and they really scored in the paint so what they did was defend the heck out of us and did what it is they could do and we didn't win the game of course it was a different time back then but like it was still of the same elk like we had a more fluid offense they were more of a you know grind it out can't hit a bucket type of team but they made it ugly and they beat us. And at that moment, I realized, you know, there are different ways to win. You don't have to be a better team. You don't even have to be, you know, more gifted in some ways. But if you can just bring the fight down to your level um, and, and not make any mistakes within, you know, what it is you can control, you're going to find out that the other team and all that it is that they're trying to do to adjust to you are going to make more mistakes than they normally would that will play right into your hands as to which your focus is going to overcome their focus because you are built for the chaos as to which they are adjusting to it and nobody wants to do that. So that's what I'm saying. The Lakers are like, you just got to get your mind focused on what it is that you can do. I never was the type of person that truly believed that there was never some type of advantage I could take from a situation. You know what I mean? Whatever it is, if I, if I, if I have a little angle or a piece of the pie, there's something I can do to contribute. You know what I mean? If, if there's a million things wrong and I can figure out one little piece that I can contribute to to fix my little section, then that's one less thing that's wrong. And so that's if enough people think that way, then you got... You know a fixed issue so that's where what a team has to do man everybody has to take care of themselves take care of your own shots take care of your own man take care of your own responsibilities etc and uh i just don't see enough of that from man to man to man on this team too many people are looking at everybody else but not trying to hold themselves accountable for res being responsible for everybody else you're on the team with your brother so if he's struggling it's your fault and if you're thinking that way and you hold yourself accountable with that in in mind, uh, then then there's never a reason to feel bad about what what comes of, of of your effort as a team. So that's that's just what I've understood, man. I've known that since I was a child. I'm pretty sure everybody in those locker rooms know that. 
And they need to engage in that type of behavior right now as professionals because we're a bad team. Uh, but we're not bad because we're incapable of things. We're bad because guys don't want to do what it is that it's capable of doing. And so, or haven't discovered it, you know, one or the other, but I have. <laughs> I quite honestly have. We're an interior scoring team um, with, with defensive strengths. <laughs> It would be great if we had the rebounding strength to match because usually teams like that rebound well. We just so happen not to, which makes us slightly more awkward than you normally want to be when you're a team like this. But it is what it is. You know, we have to make moves to make ourselves a more competitive basketball team. But we're not going to do that so long as the pieces on our team look as bad as they do right now. They're untradeable. Kendrick Nunn is worth nothing right now. Walker's not worth as much right now. You can go up and down the list. None of them guys is worth as much right now because we suck. We're desperate, and the, lo the league knows it. So uh, what Darvin Ham has to do is turn that around. He has to get the guys who look bad off the floor and put the guys who look good on it more often. It's not just a basketball game we're playing right now. We're playing a leverage game with the teams that we need to trade with in order to get better. So if we're not doing things to raise the value of those players on this team, uh, I'm afraid we're not going to be able to make the moves necessary to get better. Simply put. Uh, so we got to do Rob a favor out there, Darvin, and you got to put the right guys on the floor. And you got to play to your team's strength and make sure you learn from these size mismatch situations that we find ourselves in in these first four games. Uh, that's an area of growth for Darvin. Uh, that I know he can adjust and, and make big changes uh, to help us get better. Uh, just this, the size issues that we're finding out there are adjustable. They're very much adjustable. Uh, we have players that are simply taller <laughs> than the players he's using, so we can definitely adjust there. Um, and look, man, you know, I think that it's very obvious that Everybody in this organization is embarrassed about how this roster has panned out. Rob Palenka, everybody, they should be very embarrassed. Uh, I told everybody that this roster wasn't going to be able to shoot immediately. I told you guys this team is going to have issue shooting. But as I've also mentioned to you guys, we got worse shooting issues than we normally would because some of the players who are shot makers are hurt. <laughs> Swider. Uh, you know, Schroeder, Bryant, those guys are supposed to be able to hit the shot. None's supposed to be able to hit it. It's not like these guys are deficient to the point where they're supposed to be as bad as they are. It's just that when you have nothing but these type of guys and no real shooters, then it becomes a problem. That's what, that's what we said about Le LeBron's three-point shooting. It's like it's not normally a problem when everybody else is good or you have like four or five guys who could really, really shoot well. But when you have absolutely nobody active that profiles as a pure shooter and they're all attempting to make up for what isn't there shooting the three, you find yourself just completely horrible as a team and it gets in guys' head and then they start missing even more. And mind you, we're a defensive team, so... What do we know about shooting the ball versus defense? If you're working hard on D, chances are your shot's going to be short. So that's also a thing the Lakers are going uh, to run into as they continue to try to define themselves as a defensive team. So Rob Palenka got to pull a rabbit out of the hat, and I think we need to call some different guys up from the G League. I can't stress it enough. It's, it's a very simple solution. There's some guys who are struggling. You got to pull up the good ones. Uh, that are that are balling hard in the G League and take the guys that are not playing well and send them down there uh, if that's what the structure is for their contract. If not, then you got to wave those dudes, buy them out, get them out. I don't care what it takes. But you got to handle this in an abnormal way because you have such a short window to win. And if you've given up on the window to win, if you've given up on that window, then see it all the way through because people like myself and Dan, the Lakers fan, we all agree no man's land is no place for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's just no place for us. Uh, our fan base, our history, 
our most recent history with the struggles that we've had and rebuilding and going through four and five picks, uh, waiting for years of ineptitude to, to, to manifest so we can get players like Lonzo and B.I. only to trade them away in one flurry. I mean, we've been through too much to be in no man's land. I would rather start that process again and feel excited about a whole new crop of young players than to just kind of sit here with this not so good shooting team these hall of famers that don't halfway want to be here no more and just kind of waiting for the losses to pile up and for the peanut gallery to continue to make fun of us every morning i mean it's just at some point in time you got to start looking at yourself as a team and say are we still on the same page are we still on the same you know is everybody here still in agreement that the mission is is to be moved forward with or are we in a space where we realize this mission is a useless one and we could do better things with everybody's time by sending them places that can help them win? I look at a guy like LeBron James, he ain't going to demand a trade. He just signed an extension. I look at a guy like Anthony Davis, he's trying to fight through his injuries. He's got this injury uh, cloud hanging over him that he's constantly trying to battle, probably more so than anything else. He's trying to prove to us that he ain't soft. Which is an empty battle. I promise you it is. It's empty, bro. I think at the end of the day, <laughs> AD is being asked to be too much of a centerpiece to this roster. He should be in a situation where he has three and four other guys who are similar to him. That can all run the wing. Big players all up and down the floor around him that can shoot and block shots just like him. A situation where he doesn't have to be relied upon to be so athletic and so rebounding and all that other stuff. Where he can just play D, get buckets, pick his spots, play 70 games, 60 games a year. You know what I mean? Whatever is, whatever is best. But this situation requires too much pressure for him to be at his best health. And simply too much all the time. It's the same thing I say about KD and Kyrie in, in Brooklyn. Same thing with KD, I'm not, with, with AD here. He's just being asked to do too much. And in the presence of those unreasonable demands, it's gotten lost that those demands are unreasonable. It's like we expect him to be able to hold down this, this, when this isn't something that anyone can really hold down. part of the problem is how difficult it is to build around him as we've talked about in previous videos him and LeBron James are not easy to build around because of the circumstances the Lakers are in specifically what I'm saying he's easy to build around by himself of course but it's just the point like because of what the Lakers are doing and how they're trying to do it it's just impossible you can't skip steps if the NBA would have stayed the way it was three years ago when we first started building this team we would have been fine now, since they got all these young players that I've been telling you about all day long that are now in the league, it's just significantly more difficult to, to match up. You can't go up against Orlando with a short team. You can't go up against New Orleans with a team without size. It, these are things that are just the NBA is going to run into this season. I don't care how talented your team is. You're going to find out that that's a reality. You can't go into Cleveland without length. You know, it's, these are just things that are just real. <laughs> you try playing them, them teams in a seven-game series, you're going to get knocked off. And that's, that's what some of these teams are going to find out. So, you know, it's a new day. And I just understand that the Lakers need to figure out a way to get modern. And we can keep kicking the can down the road with this LeBron James tenure and era. Uh, but it's, it's very obvious that it's, it's empty now. It's an empty era, man. If he was focused, if he was in, if he believed in the uh, just the process of just I don't care what style of basketball I'm going to play. I'm the best player in the world, and we're going to make it work. Let me sit down and just work it out, whatever the thing is. These guys, are, you know, whatever. We're going to make it work. If he was intent on loving the process of what this particular puzzle would be, I think we'd be in real good shape. But he don't have a passion for this style of basketball. That's what it is. He don't have a passion for this style of ball. If he loved this style, we would be rolling. If he loved every style, we would be rolling. 
Because in my mind, I'm like, man, the way that I see the game, I love this title. If you remove the three-point arc, I'm still going to love NBA basketball, man. We're going to find a whole new way to play. If you give me four and five different arcs that all represent different numbers of points, we're going to figure out a way to play that too. I just love the sport when it's played at this level by professionals who know how to do it. And you mess around with the rules here and there, that can affect a lot of different things. I personally want them to put hand-checking back in the game. You know, I, there are certain things that I think the game will probably shift again and we won't see this era the way that we're seeing it now. But the point is, I think LeBron James only really wants to play the style that he loved playing from the era that he's been raised in. And what I'm saying is, they've just put together a team that betrays all of that. And you're supposed to be the guy that leads it. So... Like, if he, if he embraced the style, you know what I mean? Just embrace the style. Defense and two-pointers. Defense and two-pointers. Defense and two-pointers. Shoot the three for spacing only. It's just a jab. If he embraced the style, you know, then it's about whether or not the bodies can physically do it. And that's where it becomes a defeated point of view. It's like, even if he believes in it, you look around, it's like, man, it's going to wear us down. If we were all built like Zion and Paolo and LeBron, we'd be straight. You know, we'd be good if we had everybody built like Giannis. But that's not that's not real, man. And that's exactly what you need to really win with the style that I'm describing. So, like, guys can go down and put it, put that effort in. And we could put the best players we can to run this style. It will not be good enough to win a championship. And we know it. We know that. We can get very far, though. If we master the style, we can really, really be happy with our regular season and all that. We can catch teams off guard. But once you start running into the teams that are not lacking in size, that are going to be able to overpower you with your style, the teams that can stretch the floor and defend you, good night. And we know it. We know that. And so that's... That's ultimately why it's such a hard sell to a guy like LeBron. I'm like, love the game to love the game to love the game. And he's like, bro, 20 years in? No. That's what I'm getting. That's what I'm gathering. No. And so if that's the case, then, you know, it's up to Jeannie now. Now she just got to be, she got to figure out if she's okay with this. Because she paying for it. You know, ain't my dime. So that's really what it comes down to. As long as she's pleased with us being in a semi-okay, not quite good enough, not quite bad, uh, no man's land of mediocrity, then we're going to be sitting in that pool with her. That's just the end of the story, man. So I, I never believed Jeannie was about that, though. I don't think that she did all that she did to put this team into this, you know, to get this far just to be in this position I will say though I'm pretty sure at least one person said yo when we do all this for AD it's gonna make it so that we suck in 2022 in 2023 and 20, I'm sure somebody in that room was able to see that and we still went along with it so it's just what it is man it's just what it is so that's what I'm gonna say man that's what I gotta for the end of the evening, I thank you guys for rocking with me all day long on the various stuff that we've been having uh, go on in regards to this team. Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers are always going to be a team I root for. We're not going anywhere. We'll cover them just the same, whether they're playing great or playing bad. But you just don't want to waste another season like we did last year uh, and have it come to nothing. And then there's the Victor Webb Banyama thing. It's like, are we really actually going to be the team that drafts him like do we really have a chance at a top draft pick because obviously we don't get it it goes to new orleans but it's like we can't be that bad can we be like we can't nah not that bad lakers video 44 i thank you all for watching i'm out